Let's see. Everything up and good? Yes, sir. It's Fantastic. Up. Great. Well, thank you for your time. do appreciate that. Hello, everybody. My name is T.G. Watkins. I'm with Simpler Trading, and I've created the Moxie method, which I'll be showing you today. And what it is is uh, I'm going to be showing you how did I generate 10 to 200% returns, even if you're new to trading. And let's get this started. There we go. All right. So, you know, I don't always like to flatter or kind of leave with, uh, you know, fluffing of feathers or anything, but I do like to show that there there is reality here and to actually show some real numbers that way, you know, not blowing smoke or anything like that and actually can prove what it is that I talk about. So this is a screenshot, a sh screenshot of my Charles Schwab accounts, my IRA, and you can see that in April, uh, 2018, I took a uh, initial screenshot of the account, $67,000, and then at the time I was making this, the current statement at the time, May, was 125,000, so that's an 86% gain. And then again, I wanted to make a, a current one, so at the time it was, uh, let's see, June 20th, I was able to get that up to $136,000, which is just about 100, well, it's 103%, so it's basically double the account, and that was in about 13 months. So I just kind of like to show this and say, hey, you know, I, I can uh, talk the talk and walk the walk, and I uh, just want to put that out there, and that way we can kind of say, look, you know, I'm not just going to be saying all these hypothetical things. I'm going to say this is how I do actually trade. I've been doing this for several years, and I've I've been there before to where I had to figure out how to how to do this basically. You know, I had mentors and I had other teachers I followed and whatnot, and I took a lot of that learning, and then I developed my own thing, kind of went on my own road, and now I'm going to be turning around, and taking that back, and putting it back out there, and kind of trying to help other people get to where I where I am now, and uh, shortening those long curvy winding roads but uh, anyway so what you'll be discovering today in this presentation is how I reliably generate 10 to 200 percent gains in minutes a day on what I call these moxie stocks you know we want something that's got a lot of moxie so I'll kind of get into that and then how I target powerful short-term pops and drops for extraordinary results and you know and I put in the drops as well because while we want to have all these pops, you know, we want to be able to have price go up. We need to be really aware of when price is going to come down because, you know, it, it can be one thing to make money. It's another thing to actually keep the money. And that's what we're trying to do and make, make sure we actually get into that. And uh, so I'll be getting there too. And then uh, how I get into the right stocks at the right time. Of course, we always seek to avoid bad trades. Let me get on to this next one. Let me make sure the, uh, the questions bar here is bigger so I can see what's talking since that just got handed over. Okay, so good enough there, great. All right, so my secret for finding these precise, precise stock trades is, um, well, this is actually a screenshot of how I trade. And so what you'll notice, I like to go in there and actually like to annotate my charts. You know, I, I put in lines where I got in and then I go and actually kind of describe the entry and where it was. And then I was able to get out, you know, partial exit. You can see here that uh, for this one, it was first, about a 10% gain, and then the next one I was able to get at a 29% gain from the original entry. Now, I'm not one to trade earnings, so I always kind of avoid those. And then what you can see, you, you know, crazy, crazy moves. I wait until something comes back down. You know, I've just kind of learned and taught myself that you just, you don't miss out. You know, there's always another opportunity. There's always another train coming by. You got to wait for the setup that works for you and something that you've kind of figured out. And that's kind of what I'm showing here is that, you know, overall, with this Beyond Meat trade, I was able to get 10, 30, 34, and then another 10% gain on that. And the way that I do this is that I have a checklist. And so, again, I'll be getting into that a little bit further into this presentation. I think you guys will love it. And then um, kind of the, the joke of the day is that, you know, I like to look beyond price. So I figured Beyond Meat was a good one for that. And so as I look beyond price, I'm able to see past it. I'm able to see what's really going on inside of price. Through my analysis, I'm able to see the data uh, that I consistently make uh, when stocks are likely to pop or drop. And the method, of course, as I said, helps me get 10, 20, or 200% returns on these, these setups and these moves that I like to do. And my method has allowed me to grow my account over 103% in a little bit over a year. So this is how I'm able to catch these big moves. And I don't do it by sitting in front of a computer all day. Now, I work at Simpler Trading. I'm, you know, I kind of do my own thing there. I like it. You know, we all have our own method. And uh, this one for QTT. So my entry back here, as I said, I kind of like to just draw a line for visual representations. You can see here on this time frame, that's where it is. 
And then, so that entry where I like to get in, you can see that there's a moving average right in through here. And I was able to get in just before that. And if you notice, what happened right, right after I got in? The stock started to pop and go up. And then it took a little dip, and I'll get into it a little later, but this is what I call a trampoline move. It's when price dips below the moving average and then shoots right back up. And then I also have a checklist for how to get out of the trade. And you can see here, this is why I got out. This was a 57% gain. You know, this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. And um, I, I just love it. You know, we try and find these things throughout the, the years. And really, you know, just need a handful of these to really make your, your month or your year. And then I like to get in stocks, of course, at the right time. And as I said earlier, avoid these bad trades. And so if we're looking at something like this one, you can see here's where I got in again. And what happened right, I mean, literally right after I got in, the stock started just really, really taking off. And then you can see here, that was where I got out. And my checklist said, okay, it's time for you to get out. Now, you'll notice that, sure, there was a little bit more of a move up after that, but that's fine. That wasn't the rest of my trade. I was happy with what I got, 26%. And really, if I had stayed in, what happened after that? It just started to collapse, and then I would have been worse off, actually. So you need to know when to get in, and then you need to know when to take that money and run. And so here is an actual screenshot of my Charles Schwab summary of all the accounts that I manage. And it goes back, in this particular case, all the way back to July of 2017. And I had $120,000 at, at that time. And then fast forward another year, July 2018, got it up to 203,000. And then recently, July 2019, $517,000. So I'd say that's pretty good. I, I dabble with options, but really all this was done with stocks. And so the whole point of what we're trying to do here is take our equity curve and go from a lower left to an upper right. And what we're trying to do is enjoy these, st these strong returns year after year. And I don't do it with anything fancy with all these options and call spreads and stuff. I mean, I'm really just, I'm buying the stock and I'm trying to get these things that really move. And then, what we so kind of my path, you know, um, what's important is to kind of understand who we are, where we come from, and that kind of directs and guides uh, the way we see the world and how we interpret things. And so for me, uh, my dad was intro introduced me to the stock market as a kid. And at, you know, at the time I was young, I didn't really know much about it. I mean, I remember literally sitting on his lap and we were looking at screens and he would ask me like, oh, does this look like it's an uptrend? Or does this kind of look choppy or downtrend? And at, at the time it was kind of funny. He was kind of using my, my childhood brain without any of the complexity of life and finances and what's this gonna do? And just was helping me, having me determine trends. And he told me later that I actually helped him make some money. So I think there might be an IOU somewhere in there. And then um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us has been to stock trading seminars. Maybe it's become a little bit of a rare thing now that we have the internet so much and we're doing all these online virtual seminars. But back when I was 12, uh, my dad would go to these. And so he actually brought me to one in Texas. So I'm, I now live in Texas. So it's kind of funny how things come full circle like that. But I was 12 years old. And I don't know, as I said, if any of you have ever been to something like that, like what's the youngest person you've seen in there? You know, maybe somewhere in their 30s. Well, I was 12. People there got a pretty good kick. They were happy to see a young, young person, a young kid getting in there and kind of getting into this. And really, most of it went over my head for the two days. You know, Fibonacci is this, and retracements and extensions and whatever. But I do remember that I asked one of the presenters later on after he was done, I said, you know, is this really possible? Can people make money from all this junk and mumbo jumbo and all these squiggly lines? And he said, absolutely. He said, no one was born knowing how to trade. He said, I didn't know how to trade when I got into this, but it's teachable, it's learnable, and it's something that we can pick up and we can refine and actually run with. And, I, and that was one of the strongest and most important things that really just kind of sunk into my brain and kept me motivated as I got into this later in life, particularly in college and a little bit further. You know, so when we go through those ups and downs, uh, this was the thing that said, all right, you know, this is possible. Other people can do it. And so, as I said earlier, uh, my my interests really shape my trading style, you know, the, the kind of the way that I see the world. So. I graduated from Arizona State University in 2010 with a manufacturing engineering degree. So I'm more mechanically oriented. I need something kind of black and white, you know, go, no go. And then I kind of sidestepped and I went into finance. I went and joined New York Life as a financial advisor. I got my series six and 63 and I did that for a few years and I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't quite the right fit, you know, a little bit more of the salesman type thing. And, you know, I just, I didn't really, really fit there. And I wanted to take a little bit more control of myself you know, I liked the independent 
self, you know, self-made kind of thing, self-employed. And I really just want to kind of turn that up on steroids. And that's how I got into stock trading. And then another one of my interests is that my dad and I are also pilots. And so I grew up basically in an airplane and it instilled a lot of discipline in me because if you're reckless and you don't follow your checklist, you can really kill your account and, you know, maybe have some problems with the airplane too and not have a very safe flight. And so there I've really come to realize as I grew up and I was getting into this and pilot and you know, all that, that there's a lot of similarities between aviation and trading. There, there's a checklist, you know, there's a process. So before you even start the airplane, you go through the checklist to make sure you start the airplane properly. Before you taxi, before you take off, you know, and before you land, there's a, there's a checklist so that you make sure you don't forget anything. And trading is the same way. Trading should be relatively simple, but there are a lot of things constantly distracting us and kind of throwing us off that we need to make sure we just go back to a simple thing and make sure we follow that checklist. And then part of that checklist is the rules. And the rules mean you need to know what kind of trade you're going to take. Like what, what uh, things actually need to come into place in order for you to take a trade, a long trade, a short trade, uh, exit a trade, something like that. You need to have your rules built out. And that was something that I, it took me a few years to figure out, but now I've condensed it down. And that's kind of the thing that I, I put out there for everybody. And then discipline. I mean, it, if you don't have discipline, then you don't have the, the first or the second because, well, these are just pieces, these are just words on a piece of paper. You won't follow them. You need to have the, the discipline to be able to stick to these things that you've created and said, this is what works. And if I don't follow it, it's not going to work. So you need to have that discipline. And all of these are vital to keeping the airplane and your account from crashing and burning. And then really, why are we doing this? Uh, the trader lifestyle. So a few years ago, I moved to Denver. I'm, I'm from Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. I moved to Denver five days after my 33rd birthday just because I wanted to try it out. I was like, you know, I was born and raised in Arizona. I moved around a lot, but I've never lived someplace different. And I'm doing well with trading. My business is taking off. Like, let's go do this. So I packed up, sold the house, and I moved into an apartment that was actually on the rooftop there. And, of course, reading Trading the Zone, great book. And I had a great time in, in Denver doing that. You can see, you know, right, white water rafting. And then I learned how to ski. And I tell you, the fun thing about trading is that I got to go skiing on a Tuesday. Like, nobody else is up on the mountain. I just had to go up there. I don't have to deal with any traffic, and it's great. You know, Maybe it's the day before the FOMC when the, the market's just not doing anything. I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. Let's go, let's go skiing for the day. And then maybe a little bit more pertinent to the rest of you, having family, and you want to be able to spend your time your way. So this is uh, my family's up in Seattle, Washington, and the surrounding area. My sister just had a baby, I guess maybe 14 months ago. So this was last summer. And I uh, went up there, got to see her, and she's growing up. And so I want to be able to be around that and, and see my, ne my, my niece grow up and spend time with my family since they're up there and I'm in, in uh, Texas. So, you know, forgetting the nine to five, getting able to spend time up there. Um, I was up there for three weeks straight up in Seattle. I'm going to be actually up there again for Christmas, and I get to spend two or three weeks up there, and I can do everything I do up there on the computer, no problem. But then I understand, what if you don't have an edge? It's hard to grow your account, can't quite find the right trades, or you're missing out or getting in too late. You know, these are the these are the common problems that we run into and we're trying to figure out what to do. And so that was the big leap for me. I said, okay, if I'm gonna be leaving, I'm gonna be leaving this paycheck and this job that I have, how do I make sure I actually know what I'm doing? And so that was the struggle. And I could have gone into aviation, I could have gone in, into engineering. But I chose the freedom of the stock market and the ability to leverage my time, you know, just push a button and have it work for you and make money when you're not even doing anything. And I, that's what I liked. That was really what draw, drew me to it. But I spent years studying these squiggly lines, as my friends like to, to jab me with. But and, and they really made no sense to me in my brain. And, you know, as I said, I had some mentors that kind of helped me with this, but they had a different style and it just wasn't working for me. So I couldn't find that consistency uh, of why price moved. So I started digging back into this and I was like, okay, I need to figure out why this isn't working for me. And this, no joke, is legitimately like how one of my mentor screens looked. Now, I, I can't rip on him too hard. He's very wealthy. He makes a lot of money. He's got a good business doing what he's doing. But this makes no sense to me. I couldn't even see price. You know, I'm looking in there. I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. And so I started kind of going back and looking at things and saying, all right, the engineer in me has got to figure this out. There's got to be these answers. And so what I was looking for is trying to figure out these reliable signals. And I wanted to figure out, you know, if you look here uh, with price on the left and you see that price is kind of coming up here, why did this one, why did price go through that particular moving average and start to fall? 
And if we look at them on the right, you know, same thing, price kind of coming in there. Why did this one get scooped up by the moving average and continue up? Now, not that one of these is right and one of these is wrong, but we got to figure out which way it's going to go because on the one on the left, we could have put on a short trade and made money to the downside. And the one on the right, we could have put on a long trade and made money to the upside. We just need to figure out which way it's going to go. And so that's what I try to do is keep going back and figuring out well, which, how, do we, how do we know which ones is going to work? Like why, why did the one on the left fail that moving average? Why did the one on the right actually hold that moving average? And so another thing that was really, you know, having troubles and I was having, I just kept getting into were these good trade entries. You know, I'd have a fine entry like this on the, on the right and it would move up and then the bottom would just fall out and it would just drive all the way back down, all the way back to where my entry was, maybe even a little bit further. And it was just this stuff that really kept throwing me off and I just kind of had to figure out, okay, what, what is going on here? What's the answer? What's the reason? And then how about this one? I, I laugh every time I see this because I mean, how true is this? We get into a stock, you know, maybe here and we're thinking it's good and it goes up and then it comes right back down. Like, oh, great. And so either you get stopped out or, uh, you know, maybe you, you take out at the top and it comes right back down and then you get in and it just chops you up. You know, it just, it goes nowhere. And now what it's doing is it's taking up your time. It's the time value of money. You know, what good is this stock? if it's going no place. And so you just, now you got your money held up and it could be days or weeks or even months, and then you don't know what to do about it. And then maybe you get taken out here when it starts to come down. So these are the things that I'm trying to figure out. This is not a moxie stock. I want something that you get in and starts taking off. And then how about this? This one, you know, going back to that moving average that I talked about earlier, well, this one looked great. It was coming into the moving average here and started going up, 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 and then it just dropped. And so I have figured out some things about that. I've figured out uh, a way to mostly avoid that. And so that's kind of the stuff that I like to share with you and say, these are the things I've learned and I want to pass this on to everybody else so that you get some shortcuts out there. And really, yeah, trial and a lot of error. I mean, this is how I was kind of doing things. I was like, all right, you know, this is teachable, learnable. Well, I got to figure it out. For me though, it was death by a thousand small losses. And then of course, you know, I gotta be honest, there were definitely some large losses in there too, which kind of stung, but you know, they're all learning lessons and, and it's a bit of a tuition, right? Well, I tried just about everything. I couldn't find that simple objective way to make profitable trades. And so I went back and I started to reverse engineer the moves that I kept watching. I was like, I don't care if I was in it or not in it, but I need to go back and I need to figure out why they did what they did. And so the engineer moves like loving this. All right, uh, I got a mystery to find and I'm going to figure this out and let's apply my, my mindset to it. So these are the same screenshots that I had earlier. Remember this one, the price came into that moving average and started to go up. Well, I started to realize that if I added a, another time frame, I was going to be able to see a little bit more inside. And so what you could see here is I started going down to say the hourly chart and then you could see a double bottom there and you could see that the moxie indicator was up. So that told me that this looks at like it, it's got positive divergence wanting to start to push up. And then what you could see here on the daily chart where price was starting to come into the 50, notice that price here was starting to engage with that moving average as well. And we got that moxie price trigger. So I was getting a lot of indications on the lower time frame that in fact on this time frame that moving average was going to hold. How about the one on the right? You know, as price was starting to come into that moving average, I could step one time frame down and I could see that price had already started to fail the, the orange you know, moving average right there. And you could see that it actually got trapped underneath it. And then the moxie indicator was looking like garbage too. It was underneath zero and really didn't have any strength. There was no divergence or anything. And so the lower time frame was starting to give me these clues that I could see ahead of time telling me that, you know what, probably that moving average, not going to hold. And these were the things that I started to figure out and put the pieces of the puzzle together. Hey, Jeff, good to hear from you. And uh, thanks for reaching out. I appreciate it. I love seeing the comments. Uh, some people already ha own this and have it. And uh, it's great. I get good feedback and um, starting to build a following. I really do enjoy it. So being at Simpler, I was able to cast a wider net. And that's why I'm thrilled being with Simpler Trading, because now I can actually get out there and help more people. So anyway. For me, going back to the engineering thing, I had to figure out what didn't work. You know, that's kind of almost how humans learn better is we kind of learn by failure and figuring out what doesn't work. If we get rewarded, well, okay, that was nice. You know, we move on. The impact wasn't quite as much. And so coming back to the squiggly lines, there was not enough precision for me. I had to find out what didn't work in order to then design and build something that did work. And you look here, everything 
all the indicators we have are squiggly lines and ju there just wasn't enough precision. You know, if we're looking at something like this with arcs, you know, I can't tell exactly when this might turn or how about we get into some something like that and they start crossing and crossing each other and they're rounded and whatever. I, I just can't figure that out. And then, you know, again, back to the screen, it looks completely choppy and I can't even see price inside there. So none of that stuff was working for me. <laughs> and then uh, if anybody know the the matrix so it's a it's a movie reference it's a movie several years ago but basically it's a computer generated world you know like a simulation and if you're outside of it looking in and you don't know how to read it it looks like a bunch of computer code so on the left side of your screen a bunch of computer code you know numbers letters ups and downs you can't tell anything but there was one character that was able to have this magic power that he could start seeing the matrix and he could read it. And all this computer code started to actually turn into a physical world and he could start seeing what the computer simulation was actually trying to project and he could look past that. And so this is exactly what stock trading looked like to me to the beginning. I was looking at all these squiggly lines and just ups and downs and craziness. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm supposed to trade this? Like, how does this even make sense? And, and but over time, spending time with it, looking at this, I started to see patterns and I started to see how price would interact with moving averages. And I started to just kind of see this stuff. And now it, it talks to me and I can just, it's like seeing the matrix. I can now see these things. I can start picking out all these consistent patterns and, all, and that I can just, I can now apply trades to. And it's great. It's, it's kind of like, oh, my eyes have been opened. So really just spend enough time with it. You have me show you enough things. And then you start seeing the patterns that I see that consistently work. And now you can start seeing it and you can start applying money to those trades. And so what I had discovered is I'd built myself a reliable method for knowing when a stock was likely to pop and drop. And again, remember, you know, as much as we want the market to go up and make money there, we also need to know when those telltale warning signs are coming that something's going to happen, like the bottom's going to fall out, because then we need to get out of our trade or tighten up our stops. And so what this allowed me to do was leverage that reliability, because if I could see something that would set up again and again and again, then I had you know, 90 or 80 percent or whatever kind of percent reliability on that and I could start putting some big money on it and actually uh, win with that. And so that reliability allowed me to have minimal risk and time investment because I don't need to be sitting at the computer watching this thing. I just need to check in once a day and look for that particular setup. And though, again, going kind of come back to the uh, the pilot thing, like what if I had a trading checklist? And so I don't know if anybody knows this, but the checklist actually had to be invented. You know, it might be something that's so common, it's like recipes for a cookbook, but the concept had to be invented. And it was invented in the late 1930s, actually when the B-17 by the Boeing company was being developed. And they went for a, a test flight, some really good test pilots, experts, and they crashed on takeoff, killing everybody on board, and, you know, including the two pilots. And what they had figured out is that they missed a simple something. It was a gust lock. It controlled, it uh, locked the, uh, the, the yokes, the steering wheels, basically. And they, if they had just figured out that there was a process that you need to go through that, to turn that off and unlock it, then there wouldn't have been an accident. So planes had kind of gotten, aviation gotten too complicated for even humans at that time, like smart humans, to just remember every single little step that needs to happen. And so, as I said earlier, trading isn't necessarily complicated, but there's a lot of stuff that gets thrown at us and distracts us. And if we just had our simple checklist, and you can see this is one of the first checklists that I developed my, for myself, it's more like a flow chart, but it kept my brain in line and figuring out what was going on so I didn't miss something or I didn't like I let emotion get in there and derail me and be like, oh, I just want to get on that, this. But if I looked at my checklist, I'd be like, oh, wait, this one particular something doesn't, you know, hasn't said yes to it. And so it's a no trade and I have to wait. And so I set out to build that checklist and I went there and I kept coming back again, reverse engineering this stuff and kind of looking at this and then figuring out, okay, well, what's this checklist I need to build? And of course the pilot in me was feeling right at home because that's something that I was familiar with. And so then once I had this in place, I began to catch these lucrative trades more consistently as well. Remember that those couple of screenshots I said, look at price coming into the moving average. Was it going to hold or was it not going to hold? And if we look here, you can see we had price down, we had our positive divergence with the indicator, and then look at this lower time frame. See how price was actually engaging with that moving average? That's where I got in. 
mean, they got the Moxie price trigger and look what happened. Price just started to take off immediately after. So that one was 41% gain. And again, my checklist also told me where I needed to get out. Like, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that, f that fulfills your exit strategy. So take the money and run. How about this one? I started finally figuring out that I had this edge and I was able to see opportunities to make money where others weren't. And so I started looking at it saying, well, if I'm able to start getting in, you can see the line that I drew right there. If I'm starting to get in right before price takes off, then I gotta be, I bet I gotta be getting this right. You know, there's something here and I'm seeing this before things really take off. You know, it would be great if you got in here, but you're missing some and that's kind of a risky entry. So I let this one go for a while and then you can see here's where I got out and that's because my, my rules, my checklist to exit fulfilled their their process and said okay it's time to get out and this was neo it was 33 percent that's the electric car company in china so this was actually i think one of the few good trades unless you're on the short side now it's down in the dumps and not doing too well so another thing that one of my mentors said never marry a stock you know they're just they're just charts they're just pieces of paper they can be good to you one day and uh, not so good the next day and, but they don't go, all go right. And this, you know, this part of the checklist is we need to know when to get out. And so while you can see here, I got in for my checklist and it immediately went wrong and failed. Fine, you know, negative almost 4% loss on that. But when I'm making 20, 30, 40% gains, that's fine. And what we need to do is know how to keep these losses manageable, which allows us to grow our account. And again, another example, they don't all work out. Here's one where I, real tight, I got in right there and it immediately went against me right there. That was a 1.5% loss, no big deal. We really need to be considering this like a business and it's just the cost of running a business. You know, think about it like inventory and utilities, employees. You know, losses are a thing, but they must be controlled just like expenses. And here's another one I always talk about, you know, taking the money and run. So you can see here, Got in here with Yeti, it kind of held, held, held. Here's our Moxie price trigger, and then it just popped. Now, I got out right there and fine with that. Now, if you're looking on this one chart, you can see that price did end up going longer. It's fine, that's a different trade. My trade here was right there and right there. We don't know where price might go. It could end up failing like that. Um, so that's another trade after the fact. Got to know what your trade is, take it and walk away. Here's another one, Survey Monkey. You can see on the right, got in at the, uh, the green arrow. That's my Moxie price trigger. Took off, let it went, 17%. And you can see that that one started to sink a little bit and then it moved up. Again, another trade. I got my 17% out of that one. Very happy. Here's another one, VFC. So this one, if you can see here, there was my entry, got the Moxie price trigger, started following that moving average. And then you can see I got out right where my rules told me. And even though it was only barely 10%, that was all the trade. You can see this one then started just to melt down, melt down, melt down, and just didn't work. So you take, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a 5% or a 10% gain. If your checklist says that's all that it's got, then that's all it's got. Here's another one, MDB. And this one you can see, this is where, again, I like to annotate my charts. I got in, I actually waited till after earnings because I don't like having that, that earnings fluctuation and craziness. And then got in right there. You can see that line right there. And then very next day, just started to scream and take off. Now this one, I thought there might be a little bit more. You can see it started to engage with the moving average and then it didn't. And right there is where I got out. And you can see the Moxie price trigger too. Fine, 12%, that's all I got. And after that, it just kept kind of bleeding down. And um, you know, as I said, don't marry, don't marry your trades. Get in, get out. Here's another one, Okta. And I think you can see now, um, again, so maybe I should update some of these and say where we are now, but you know, here's a great entry, fantastic entry. You know, I didn't have to deal with all this chop right there. You can see I got in and then the very next day it started to move up. Then I decided to take some off here because my, my process said take some off the table and you can see there's a dip. And then that rebounded, got the rest of it, took it off. And then you can see, yeah, it kind of went someplace, but not really much. I was very happy. And if you're trading options, you need to be able to take the, 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 uh, the momentum right there and get out when it's still paying well. Otherwise, all that uh, volatility kind of collapses in on it. Here's another one, Funko. Uh, now, this one was a high short interest one. So when it was ready to go, you can see I got in, let it kind of percolate for a little bit and started to move. And then I just, I added more because I could tell, I was like, okay, this thing's going to go. Added more. And then here I took off about three quarters of my position because I said, okay, this thing is crazy. I got some rules that I can talk about later here uh, on that one on the daily chart. 
And then it just started to fail. And uh, as it turns out, I took the rest of my position off here once price started to fail that moving average. So, and then here's another fun stuff. So, you know, with all this kind of consistency and the success and, you know, my friends were starting to hear and I was doing a good job and, and uh, my parents, you know, they could see what I was up to and my account started to grow and they're like, oh, okay, you know, looks like you're, uh, you're kind of doing something here. And so my friends, family started to hear about all this, my success, you know, my family knew my numbers, my friends didn't really know my numbers because I didn't want to talk about that. And so my mom said, well, honey, I got $6,000 just kind of sitting around. Um, do you want to do something about that? I was a little concerned. I didn't want to lose my mom's money, but I figured that even if I, if I, if I did lose my, her money, I was like, well, she's my mom. She'll still love me anyway. Right. And, and I said, if I, if I really am doing well at this, then I should be able to help my mom out and take that money and do something with it. So you can see here, April, 2018, uh, about $5,700. That's what we started the account with. And it went well. Fortunately, it went well. Uh, it also helps that sometimes you get really good trades that come along. This was one of my best moxie stocks, and this is why I call it moxie stocks, because we're looking for the stocks that've got that moxie. And what you can see is here's the moxie price trigger, and so got in. You know, maybe maybe not the most ideal thing, but this was one of those dollar stocks. This IGC it was a cannabis stock at the time. You can see it was a dollar fifty, so kind of a, a wild wild west kind of stock. That's where I got in. And then immediately it fell back down and I don't know, I lost something like 40%. And I didn't get out because my rules didn't say to get out. The checklist said, stay in. Yeah, it sucks right now, but you know, I think you're, you know, everything's fine. It should be fine. So I let it recover for a day or two and it started to move up again. And you can see here, then I got in on the second entry and you can see the dates and the prices and all that. And I, I put more on. I was like, okay, this thing's starting to work out. And indeed it did. You can see it just started to take off and jump up. And again, with my, my trade rules, you can see here, I took some off because I was like, okay, 144%, this thing is crazy. Um, I don't know what's going on. I wanna make sure I at least take some off the table and put that away. And then you can see it continue to go up and up and up. And then it just within days, you can see, cause it was what, uh, September 28th to October 2nd, just within days, this thing started going vertical. And now I'm up to 257% gain on this thing. I'm like, this is insane. I haven't, like, this is, went from a dollar something to like $14 and it's a cannabis stock awesome. And so I really took off most of my money at that point. I was like, I don't even know how, how good this thing is going to be. So I took off about three quarters of the position at that point. And then the very next day it started to implode. And you can see by the end of that day, I took off the rest of it for a total on that one for 231% gain. So this isn't the thing that turned my mom's account from 6,000 into 20,000, but it was one of the ones that really, really helped. There were a couple other winners and that all adds to it. It's not one stock that's just gonna take your account and just make it amazing. You need to have a few of these things, but you need to make sure you have that process that you're ready to catch them. So this was the best one and it helped me really take my mom's account from 6,000 to 20,000. And so for, for me and for my family and, and what we do, it's like, okay, what am I getting this gray hair for? What am I pulling my hair out for? What's, what's the purpose of all this? And that was, we need to really kind of have our purpose because there are going to be some dark days out there. It's going to be tough. And we need to think, what are we doing for this? You know, if you've got a family, maybe you're trying to create a legacy and some money for them and to, to make sure you have freedom and you can do the things you want to do in life. So you kind of maybe even need to write this down and make sure you, you have motivation because when, when you lose the money or when you have a hard day and you think, okay, what am I doing here? And this was something that I was able to, you know, it worked out way better than I ever thought. I just thought I was going to help grow my mom's account and give her some money. And I was able to turn into this. And so what they did is they, they were remodeling their kitchen up in Washington. And I was like, she wanted this granite countertop more specifically, which is amazing. It looks like petrified wood. It's really quite beautiful. And she was kind of feeling guilty of, about spending the money on something like that. And I said, mom, uh, you know, that 6,000, uh, well, I turned it into 20, uh, essentially for you, it's free money. Like here, this is what I did. Thank you for being my mom. You know, you raised me and how would I help you with this? And so this is why, you know, I, the account is now back down to like $6,000 because she took most of it out. And this was February, 2018. And uh, it was a total account growth of 233%. And um, here she is smiling nicely in front of the kitchen that I helped her fund. And so that really feels good. 
And so I started realizing all this and the word was kind of getting around and my, my parents were happy and I was starting to get requests to teach. And I was like, well, I don't really know what to do about this. And people wanted to say, okay, well, can you help me? And I said, okay, well, I like the idea of leveraging my time and leveraging my money with the stock market. So I figured, well, how do I leverage my education? How do I leverage my skills? And that's what I was trying to figure out and a way to do that to help other people. And so you don't have to be a lone wolf out there, you know, trying to figure out how to pick these stocks. It's really tough. I know that it's incredibly dig difficult to figure out exactly when or how or where to find these best opportunities like that. And this is why I wanted to show you how I take action on this and actually find those right stocks at the right time. And so I took action and I created Moxie Trader. That's the business that I have. I'm with Simpler Trading now, but Moxie and Moxie Trader is the thing that I've created and, uh, and allowed me to get to where I am today speaking to you guys. Uh, Marvin, so this, it can be applied to Forex. I'm not an expert on it. Um, what we're going to be working on is actually releasing this indicator. And that's what I want to be able to give this to other people so that they trade the things that they trade. That is not necessarily my forte and it can be adapted to it and it does work. But, you know, as I said, I'm a stock trader. That's what I do. And so it can be applied to other markets. We just got to kind of figure out how those methods apply. All the education that I talk about and all the, the rules, they all still apply. Just got to use it to the markets that you like. So anyway, what I'm offering for right now is the Moxie Trader alerts. So here at Simpler, what I'm doing is we have an alert service and I send out ways, um, communications basically, of stocks that I see that have the potential for 10, 200%. Now, my goal is to help you enjoy these precise stock trades without having to stare at the market all day. That's what I like to do. I like to you know, scroll through stocks, try to find this stuff. I like to go back. I mean, I eat this eat, sleep, you know, trade, repeat. And this is what I like to do. And Moxie Trader offers the objective entries and exits from these hand-picked watch lists that I like to go through. And I try and send them through my rigorous checklist to make sure we avoid these false signals as much as possible. And so what you're gonna be getting with the Moxie Trader Mastery is my Moxie Trader alerts. You're gonna get market updates. In fact, on Friday, I just put out a, a weekly video and sometimes if the market's really going crazy, I'll put some videos out during the market week and just something like that. And I have a forum to where I talk to everybody. And then we also offer a live trading question and answer session once a month. And in fact, the next one is coming up this Tuesday. Uh, what was it, October 1st? Yeah, October 1st, Tuesday. We're gonna be having a session there. And so if you guys want to sign up, that way you'll be able to kind of, you'll come in, you'll be able to talk to me directly. I'll show you everything I do and how this works and some of the setups I'm looking at. You can ask me all sorts of questions that you want. And then I have a, a trade spreadsheet so you know, oops, so that you, so that you know exactly what my current positions are and where I'm at and what I'm doing and what I'm putting out there. And you can see the, the track record and the history. And then we also, as part of the Moxie Trader Mastery, we have a learning center. And this is where I have a bunch of videos in there that break down all of those different components of the things that I teach. And so, uh, you know, with the moving averages that I have or how the indicator works with this or uh, stuff that even doesn't apply to the indicator, it's just technical analysis. And so these are all the various things that I've learned and I want to put them into an area and you guys go in there, you can check out all the individual videos and you can start learning and seeing things the way that I see it and that that might actually help or apply to your kind of trading. And then that way you can get up to speed and you can learn the lingo that I use, uh, the concepts that I look at. And that way you can, when you start seeing the trades that I put out and the, the way that I like to actually look at the market, you'll start, you'll be up to speed and you'll see exactly what I see and talk about those patterns that I have. So here's the, the live trading schedule, uh, the sessions that we have. You can see we've already done a few. Um, the next one's gonna be coming up October 1st, two to 4 p.m. Oftentimes they go longer. We got a lot of people in, you know, we got a lot of people in there and um, they're kind of a chatty group. I love it. So they ask me questions like, how about this one? How about that one? And I, I just, I love talking about this stuff. So I don't know if you guys can kind of pick up on that, but you know, as I said, I've been doing this for several years. It's gotten me here. I'm very appreciative. I'm very grateful that I'm here and can do this kind of stuff. And I just want to you know, pay it forward. I had people help me spend a lot of time on me 
and help me get where I am. In fact, uh, her name was Sue. She was a, an older lady that was a, a trader for a long time, and she she really like took me under her wing and helped me out. So all I can do is turn around and say, look, guys, I figured something out that works for me, and I want to see if I can help you figuring something out as well. So this is uh, our schedule that we got coming up, and we got more things in plan. So I'm still um, I'm relatively new to simpler trading. Uh, I'm not new to trading. I'm not. I've created my own company, Moxie Trader, and so what we're doing is we're really I mean, I got some horsepower behind me now with, with Simpler Trading, so I'm real thrilled about that. And we're actually starting to roll me out and get more and more stuff and um, figure out how to get me out into the world a little bit better. So I'm just, I'm so excited that I'm actually with this company, like my dream's coming true. Uh, and I moved to Austin, Texas in February for it. So very, very happy. So this is the Moxie Trader uh, special uh, we're offering. It's a 30-day trial, $7. I mean, come on, you know, that's like the cost of a trade, like in and out, right? Come in, no contract, cancel any time. You can see simplertrading.com slash try. Give us a call at that phone number. Um, small office, we got a good bunch of people. I'm really thrilled being there. And uh, it's really helping me kind of take off and say, this is what I know. This is what I do. This is how I trade. This is the success I've had. And I want to be able to turn around and disseminate it to all you guys. Uh, Marvino, the, the duration of a typical trade that I have, uh, I've actually gone back because I had to kind of get some of this stuff ready for when I was joining Simpler. It's 15 days to about 30 days, sometimes uh, 40 days, sometimes five days, but the bulk is probably between 15 and 30 days. Now, sometimes it'll be one day, you know, because if we get in, just like what I showed you on one of those slides, if I get in, and the market decides not to behave and it goes completely the other direction, it'll hit my stop and I'm out. So that's a one day trade. Um, other times, something that will continue to go, like I was just in Tesla, actually on this last move, and I thought I was gonna go for a while. Uh, we had a fantastic entry, it followed all of my checklist and we got in at a great thing and it jumped up and then it started to flag sideways. I had my stop up there. And then when the market took that dump just uh, what last week, it was mid last week, and uh, Tesla followed it too and, and took me out. So I was like, all right, well, you know, I wanted this to be a longer, bigger move, but the market had other other plans. And so that's just trading, but that's fine. We have our stops. We, we got in well, we had our stops and it clicked off and we had a gain. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so John mentored me. He would, no, actually he, he did not mentor me. I, I would watch him. It, um, I would watch his videos. I was actually a subscriber to Simpler, I think it was Simpler Options back in the day, and not quite my style because I don't trade options. And um, Sue McLaren was one, uh, Derek was another, you know, other people in the world that I've, I've come across. And in fact, Wally here with Traders Talk Live, he and I have been working together for several years and I've learned from him, I, maybe he's learned from me, but we've, we've done some other uh, programs to where we get up and we teach and we speak in front of other other students and we we share the table it's great so this is this is like one big happy family because we all see the market in a different way and this is just happens to be my way and that's what I'm trying to do and uh, teach it to you guys um, so HD uh, we are working on that yes uh, we do have plans to be releasing the indicator I, I think it's going to be coming up soon I'm working on all the the presentations we had to kind of get some things on the back end buttoned up uh, as you might imagine since I am new to simpler trading and now I've got a whole team of people behind me now we're, we're taking it to the next level and yeah we're going to be working on that and actually having this so that you can get into your hand and um, that's very very exciting because for as much as what I can do here, and we have that alert service, and I, I show you guys the kind of trades I'm taking, and you know maybe people rather just have the fish instead of learn how to fish, but I know that other people would like to follow along or would like to trade sectors that I don't look at. You know, I'm only one person with two eyes, and I have a certain methodology, and I take certain trades, and while that may not work for other people, um, we found a, a very large niche of people who like to say, hey, you know what, you're doing great, let's just sign up and um, I'll do what you do or I'll take a look at what you do and there's still a lot of education in there. And that's what's important is I do more than just hand out a trade. I like to really educate during the whole time. Uh, yeah, it works on Thinkorswim. That's what we're gonna be releasing it on. But uh, we, we still need some more time. We're working on it. Um, if you follow us at Simpler Trading, if you join up for this, I mean, you'll start getting that information and then we're going to, we're going to make a big stink about it when everything comes out. So trust me, you'll be hearing about it, but come on board. 
um, join the team. That way you can get into our email list and you can actually figure out when we're going to be doing this. And uh, we should start putting some, some marketing material out there pretty soon. So, uh, Teddy, I believe that's my time. I want to make sure that I'm polite to everybody else. Thank you, everybody, for this. And really, come on, check it out. Seven bucks, 30-day trial. Uh, that'll get you in for the October 1st. It's Tuesday. And that'll be the live Q&A. You can come on board and talk to me and ask me all the questions and I can show you how I do this. So it would be great to see you and thanks again for your time.